Greetings everybody, Kerry here with another intermediate level Sudoku lesson. In this video I will go over an extremely common strategy that I will use several times in nearly every puzzle I encounter. I call this strategy matching set, however I have also seen this strategy referred to as locked set. This is a strategy I will return to extensively in future videos, but for this particular video uh, the goal will be to define what a matching set is, as well as to provide some examples where this strategy can provide an escape from getting Getting stuck. The best way I can explain the idea of a matching set is that it is an area of the puzzle, usually two to three cells. In rare cases it may be more than that, but most of them will be two to three cells large. And the idea is you will know the numbers that will go into those cells, but you don't necessarily know the order that they will go in. Even without solving those cells, you can separate those cells out and ignore the number choices elsewhere in the unit, whether that unit be a 3x3 three three box, a row, or a column. The goal of the strategy isn't always to solve a cell number directly, but rather to limit the possible choices in other cells. I'll give you a demonstration from Crazy Dad on an intermediate level puzzle. If we take a look at the bottom right hand corner, we have a 3x3 three three box where I have listed in small numbers all of the possible candidates in the unsolved cells. Within this box is a matching pair which I have highlighted in yellow. The two yellow cells are the only blank cells within its row, so we know which two numbers will go in there, that being a 5 and an 8. However, we don't yet know the order in which they'll appear, that isn't going to stop us from limiting the rest of the cells in the 3x3 three three box from being a 5 and an 8. So I'll just uh, pencil those two cells in and that's going to create a wall between uh, the, the matching pair and the other cells within the unit. So inside the wall you'll have a 5 and an 8, outside the wall you'll have everything else. Separating the matching pair in this way will be especially helpful on this blue cell right above the matching pair. So inside we have a 5 and an 8, and in the blue cell we have a 3, 5, and 8 as candidates, those being the candidates because those are the three numbers missing from the second to bottom row. However, because we know that a 5 and an 8 are going to occupy the two yellow cells, we can eliminate those candidates in the blue cell, and that leaves a lone candidate of 3. So we can plug the 3 in, and that's going to give us a lone candidate of 1 in the top right cell. So that matching pair was fairly easy to find since it was on a row where those were the only two missing numbers from the row. However, that is not the only way to spot a matching pair. I'm going to use a different inter intermediate puzzle to show that it is also possible to find a matching pair through scanning. And to show you this, I'm going to simultaneously scan the 1 and the 5 over to the bottom left-hand box. So I'll start by scanning the 1s, and you'll see that the 1 has to be in one of the top two cells. However, if we scan the 5, we're going to get exactly the same result. So that's going to pin the 1 and the 5 into those top two cells. These scan pairs will also allow you to make eliminations on cells within the pair itself. If we hadn't noticed the scan pair, the two cells could have been either a 6 or a 9, but the matching pair limits them to either a 1 or a 5, and that means only one cell in the 3x3 three three box can take a 9. I'm actually going to scan the 9 to show you this. So the 9 on this row is going to prevent those three cells from being a 9. The yellow cells are a 1 and a 5, and that means only the bottom right-hand corner can be a 9 within the 3x3 three three box. I'm now going to extend the logic of matching sets over to triples, that's three cell sets, and in order to do so I'm going to switch puzzles. This one here is actually rated challenging by Crazy Dad, and I don't intend to ramp up the difficulty with this example, however it has a very nice matching triple which I think will have a very clear demonstration of how this concept works. So a matching triple is exactly what you'd think, it is a set of three cells where we know which three numbers will be placed in them, however we we don't necessarily know the order of those three numbers. These are very common in intermediate level and tricky Sudokus and they work very much the same way that pairs do. So I'll draw your attention to the top right and we have not, uh, sorry, six of the nine cells filled in. 
However, the three missing cells are all in the same row. So in those three cells, we can lock the three candidates in as a three, five, and six. Now it is not necessary for all of the cells to have all of the candidate. As you can see, the left candidate can't be a six. It can only be a three and a five. However, that doesn't change the fact that a three, five, and six will be placed in those three cells in some order once we're done the puzzle. This knowledge becomes important in looking at the rest of the row, which has four candidates in one cell and five candidates in another. The matching triple is going to allow us the to eliminate the three, the five, and the six from all of those cells. In doing so, the middle box now has a cell with a lone candidate of one, and that is going to force the other cell into being a seven. And that wraps up this tutorial. I have one more intermediate topic to cover, after which we should be able to tackle some slightly more difficult puzzles. I thank you for watching. Please subscribe and or leave your comments below. If you have any particular examples that you would like me to cover, I would be happy to take a look. Bye for now.